Hey, good morning, folks. AJ, the CEO here, and a bunch of y'all like the $1,000 2024 All You Need bundle. Um, we talked about all the equipment that really I think is essential for you to get started live streaming at your church. Um, well, today is the day where I mentioned in that video that all that stuff was actually for a ministry, and that's the ministry we're going to be installing today. That is at Shiloh Baptist Church here in Bowling Green, Virginia. We're going to be heading up there, and we're going to be putting all that stuff to play. So, hey, wait till the end so you can actually see the end result of everything. Um, we're adding PTZ. I actually had an extra joystick. I, was, I did find that. So we're going to be adding that into there. But the mini PC, the um, PTZ camera 20X, our connection to the sound system, all that fun stuff we're going to be hooking up here so let's get inside well let me get there i'm still 10 miles away let's get up here and then let's show you what we can do to transform a ministry and is a thousand dollars all you really need to live stream your church stuff we'll find out Alrighty, folks we are here bringing in the stuff ended up buying myself a smaller ladder so i don't have to carry that big one especially for small little jobs like this but like i said let me flip you around so like I said, that was the, the old school joystick that I had extra. If it doesn't work for them, hey, that's fine. But that is a possibility. We also need to ex um, extend the internet. So I have this power line converter that would at least have a solid connection instead of having a um, wireless one go all the way back. And like I said, when I figured out that I needed a TRRS cable. Um, instead, I had already ordered this um, audio interface. So we'll go from there. So let me grab this and then get inside. All right, so as you can see, this is the setup that they had with an all-in-one system. I never really liked the all-in-one systems, mainly because you can't really grow with them and you're kind of limited on what you can do with them. But this is gonna be replaced with the mini PC that will give faster performance for OBS. Here is their mixer. And we've used a board like this before. What we're gonna do is the audio that's coming out of here. Um, actually, I did bring these cables. We're gonna come out of the main out since they're not using them um, until I get comfortable with putting them on um, a separate mix for right now. So we do have the mains out, we have that. We also have two quarter inches, um, which is wondering why they had mono out. Anyway, we do have, those are aux inputs. We do have an aux out, so we could do that if we do a separate mix, but let's go ahead. And this is what is wirelessly connecting to the monitors right now. They said they have some issues with it sometimes. Ultimately, what would happen is we would replace this and actually do fiber optic connections directly to the TVs with back here. So what we're gonna do is this is an old SD camera. We're taking that one down. We have a 20, 20X um, HD PTZ camera, and I might actually take that entire mount down. Did I bring that? Yeah, because that's a whole brand new sealed one. So we should have a mount. So depending on how difficult it is, I might take this whole thing down and put the mount up and flip the camera upside down. We can have more of a range. But let's go ahead and do that part, and then we'll set up the computer and all this other fun stuff. All right, the camera mount down, and we're going to put this one up. And everybody always asks me, why do I put it upside down? It's just a range of motion. So, again, if you had it in its upright position, and I'm going to simulate it here. At most, when you tilt it down, you'd be able to get this because the base and everything is in the way. But when it's flipped upside down, you're rarely going to have to get a shot like this. So you'll still be limited. You won't be able to go straight up like this, but why would you need to? This, you can get all the way right here. And that's the reason why I always put these in upside down because it allows somebody to walk all the way to right here to this door and get them if need be. So you got all of this because nothing up here needs to be in film. So that's the reason why. So let's get this up here. Let's level it, put the new arm up, put the new camera up. And then it looks like they already had an RS-232 cable right here. 
So instead of me running another one, even though I have a longer one that can go this entire length, I don't have any extra anchors to tie this down, but I might actually do it. I mean, I got this 75 foot RS232 cable that I've had for years and it's like, might as well put it to some good use and have all the extra rolled up under the table. All right, let's go through the list. We have our camera, we have the fiber optic HDMI cable, and I forgot the ethernet, but I still had a box of it, so I'm making the own cable for that. They already, even though they already have this RS-232 cable ran, I don't wanna unconnect all of these, so we're gonna use these and only replace this if I have to. Just need to find, oh, and there's the other end of it right there. So we should be able to connect that to the joystick. So that's one less thing have to worry about pulling. Now, I've already taken down the computer. Let's go ahead and set up the system. They already had a keyboard and mouse, so that's not something they has to worry about. Um, and again, the system is so small, we we'll put it right over here and we'll have more than enough space once we put the monitor here. So let's set that part up. Alrighty, so we're actually done. That's not a cable I need. I'm probably gonna cut that, but we got everything hooked up, cleaned out a lot of this. I need to go to the store and get um, another surge protector because we're out of plugs. Um, also, I ended up using the um, the main, uh, oh, I can't speak, XLR outs, and that is what's going into our um, audio interface. I don't know why I'm not able to speak right now, but we got that connected. The other thing is in my rush, I grabbed the wrong cable. I got grabbed another HDMI cable. We need the display port, the display port that we plug here because the HDMI actually needs to connect to the wireless um, HDMI that goes to the TVs. But I'm gonna run to the store and do that. But as you can see, we got our camera up. We can't control it right now because this is something that needs to be plugged in. But we got the audio coming in. So if we go to properties and we scroll down, there's our audio interface. And um, everything is good to go. We just got to test out a few things. Other thing is Wi-Fi was back here. So we used the old standby that we've used in a long time. This is a power over ethernet adapter. We have this here and we have the other one that is on the same um, circuit, which is good back there near the router. So we actually have a hardline internet connection back here. So let me run to the store real quick, get a display port cable, which I know is gonna be overpriced. And it's, I'm, I'm disappointing myself because I had two of them on the floor and I thought I grabbed the right one, but obviously I didn't. Um, we'll do that and get a surge protector here, plug all the rest of the stuff in. Um, probably extend some other stuff because all of those are used up right there. Um, and the computer ones is taking up a couple of spaces. So I'll probably take the monitor and the computer off of that and plug that directly into the surge protector down there. But other than that, we're going to start some training and then we'll be good to go. Alrighty, folks, so as you can see, we got the image coming back from OBS in the system, but we had a little snafu. So the way that the other TVs were hooked up, they were actually SD. So it went from a RCA converter over to coax. So that's why this back TV isn't working because it was that white cable is a coax cable. And in pastor's office, it's the exact same thing. So we're going to get another TV for pastor's office. We're going to get another um, fiber optic HDMI cable for here because they're getting a new TV to replace that. That will plug right in. We'll do an HDMI splitter back here, which will now feed the um, HDMI transmitters with the future plan of having fiber optic cables going directly to the TVs to get rid of the transmitters. That one is not working for some odd reason. We'll diagnose that when we come back. Um, and we're, I changed my cable out to the tape out so we can get that stuff. We'll be back here um, maybe Thursday because we ordered everything um, next day. So this stuff will be here um, 
be here Wednesday. So in this connection, what we're going to do is the SDI, I mean, the, it's an RG6 that's going back to pastor's office. We're going to convert that over to an SDI cable. I'm going to use an HDMI to SDI converter, plug that in here, put the SDI to HDMI on the back of the new TV that I'm going to get pastor there. So that will solve that instead of trying to climb up in here and pull a new cable. Everything else here is local. Run another fiber optic HDMI, another 50 foot through here, and that's where the new TV is going to go. Um, so we sh should be straight. Got the changed out my cable. The old cable that was there had a problem. So now we got control here of the camera. So they have a lot more control from here. Really slick, and we're just going to test out some audio, and that's about it. So this was the whole setup that we talked about. I'm going to pull up my account real quick just to do a quick live stream test, but I think that's about it. All right, folks. So, of course, things have changed, and that's just how the nature of it is. We got everything working, but the original cables that were going to the TVs were VGA cables converted over to coax. Pure 1080p signal is not going to work with that. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to convert the RG6 cable over to a SDI cable. We're going to put an SDI to HDMI converter on the back of the pastor's TV, get him a new 32-inch screen TV, get a fiber optic HDMI cable, put a 1x8 splitter back down here to replace that one that was sending the signal to everything, the distribution there. We're gonna run another fiber optic HDMI cable to a new 65 inch TV that I'm gonna get this afternoon that's gonna replace that direct connection to here, there. And I may think about giving them the OC Go because now the workflow is different. Originally, this would always show um, the camera, but now that we're doing presenter with graphics, it needs to be able to change both. So that's the second monitor. So it's either going to be OBS out or presenter. It can't be both unless we add a third monitor in here. And obviously, we don't have the space for that. If we get them a video switcher like an ATEM or the OC Go, which I already have hands on, the OC Go will feed to the televisions. We'll have the second output from the computer going to that, have the camera going to that, and the OC Go, you pick which input, and there's your, your video switcher, and the OC Go can handle the streaming. So may think about that. We got our audio straight. I think the main XLR outs are not working. When I plugged it into the tape out, it's working, so that's fine. Um, so we got a bunch of stuff to do, but that was project one. We upgraded the camera. We got all that done. So that part is fine, and I need to cut that cable when I am back to get that out of the way. Um, but we will be back Friday to replace all of this and do some a little bit of training, and we'll come back and do some major training with them to get them up to speed. And yay, so... Nice picture and all that good stuff. So I'll be happy with that. And we will be back. But that was the whole $1,000 bundle that we got there. Um, doing good. And I'm actually doing an update. The graphics card driver was an issue. So I'm just running an update on that. So we should be good after that. But anyway, folks, we'll see you later.